when you use the broader definition of unemployment, it stands at 36.7, which is about 9.5 people who are unemployed in South Africa as a whole. When you come to the youth demographic, you must understand that 51.5% of the country's demographic is under the age of 25. Between the ages of 15 and 25, one in every three young people fall in a category which we call NEAT, neither employed, not in any form of educational institution, and not in any form of training. So what does that mean in the context of development? For me, it, it, it means that we are not in the place to have sustainable development. Because when you and I are not working, when you and I are irritated, when you and I have no other options, the options that are available are not the ones that are conducive for peace, for security, and arguably most importantly, for any form of development. And it is important that we understand that this is, has a ripple effect across the African continent. The average age of an African is 19. In Somalia, one of the most populated countries on the continent is 16. The majority of the population have not even gone through an entire primary education process. So what does that mean for us as young people, but for the continent in the context of development? How do we develop, one, when we don't have a skilled labor, and two, when we speak about the context of a, polit of a youth demographic, which I would argue at this moment looks more like a youth catastrophe? The reality is that you and I are living in a world where a lot needs to change, but I want to bring it closer to home and say, when do we start taking ownership? I spoke yesterday in an event and we had about seven of the top 50 listed JSE CEOs and some of them in a number of companies and one of them argued that one of the realities that we are facing is that labor is dying. By that I mean that with the, with the, with the, with the fourth industrial revolution at our front, for example, if you're looking at mining, if you look at retail, a lot of those jobs will be automated. And what does that mean for you who's still a student, for you who's looking to be employed, and for you who's looking for opportunities? And so what I want to engage out and engage specifically on is that the onus is on you today to rediscover and rewrite the narrative. What does that mean? That is to say, when we rewrite the narrative, we start to understand that the questions are more important than the answers moving forward. In Africa today, peace, the lack of peace and security have taken away a lot of potential around the issues of development. Because we know that when there's no peace and security, money is taken to finance the military, to finance the war, to finance everything else but what requires development. And so for me, I guess the conversation that I really want to have is around how do we change this particular narrative, particularly as it relates to you and I as young people. So as we look at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, for me, which one is the one that is quite close to my heart is SDG number eight, which speaks about decent work, which speaks about economic growth because those for me go hand in hand. And so one of the things that is arguably most important and that we need to reconcile and maybe engage much more deeper about is that how do we balance one, international aspirations around development, but balance it out with local priorities. When I mention the challenges that are happening in my township, as an example, in, the, in relation to what is happening globally, how do we reconcile those two worlds? How do we go back home and say, I am doing one, two, three, and it will benefit you, but it's only seen at a global level? And so for me, I guess the conversation has to be a bit more nuanced. We have thought a lot in binary terms that if it's not this, it's supposed to be that. So as we move forward, I guess the conversation has to really speak to about three, three, three issues. That there is no savior. The era of Botata who are coming to save us does not exist anymore. So you have to take on that ownership and the responsibility to develop around your own space. That's number one. Number two has to be, and arguably most important for me and maybe this particular forum, is that we are not involved in policy forums that dictate and shape the policies that will affect you for the next 30 years. I say this because I used to be in one of the working groups of the Office of the Presidency and there was a working group, youth working group underneath, youth working group, and unfortunately the people who are in, inputting on youth issues are no way under the age of 40. So that means your future is dictated by people who won't be here when it actually materializes. And so what is important is then the call to action to say, get involved in the process. Whether you go do it through UNASA, through the UNMGC, or through the various committees, you have to be involved in the quest for development as and how it relates to young people. It is not enough for us to, anymore to say, you know, everything, nothing about youth without youth, but yet we are not involved in those platforms. Yes, when we argue now that African solution for African problems, but yet there's never been an African solution for those problems. We say it rhetorically so many times, but yet we sit on the sidelines. 
And so for me, passionately so, it is I'm angry and agitated at most times because we are rhetorically brilliant as a country and, Af and arguably as a continent, but we are nowhere in action. So therefore, for me, it is incumbent that as we sit here, as we engage in the realities, the complexities that exist in and around our world, that one, we realize that one, we need to be involved in the process, but two, we have to dictate the narrative. Generation 2030, last week I was involved with a UNICEF working group, regional working group, and the executive director was here. And one of the things that we bring apart was the issue of Generation 2030, the SDGs, and the developmental plan. And the voice of the global south is nowhere to be heard. We represented, I can tell you, anybody who's within the UN MGCY, the groups that are working and inputting at the UN, will tell you that the voice largely comes from European countries, from other Americas, and from everywhere else, but specifically Africa. And so that's where I'm calling on you to be informed, one, but to be engaged. The third, and arguably also one of the most important and most contentious issues is that we live in an era where there's so much political turmoil that you need to start you know, decluttering the space. We are too focused on things that really do not matter. At the end of the day, whether you're going to vote next year, whatever the realities of your own lived experiences are, what you need to understand is that the onus, one, as a young person, lie on you to dictate your future, but two, and arguably most importantly, is that where there is no unity in our actions, in our sentiments, in the work that we do, we cannot move anything. So whether you're speaking about Generation uh, Agenda 2063 in the African continent that was signed by people who will most likely not be here, and in which a spouse's aspiration, like the gun must be silent in two years from now when we know that the DRC today is called the barrel of the gun because it has been in a constant state of violence and young people near they wish to live to the age of 22 because by the time most of them get to their teenage years, they go into the military, they go into militia, they go into rebel groups, that's how they survive. So I guess in closing, what I'm trying to get to is that on the question of development, on the question of youth development, we have to have greater urgency. Greater urgency in our participation, greater urgency in the work that we do. And that I will leave me with a personal anecdote. One of the institutions, as I said, I shared a story about my own personal township, Atamelang. Atamelang is literally means come together. And we then formed an organization, a number of young people, and we said, Atamelang Aritwisaneng, which literally means come together, community, and let's help each other. Why? Because I understood the challenge that you can't move if I'm not helping you move, but I have the access to where you want to get to. And so moving forward, I guess the conversation that we need to have, whether it's about the global north or south, or whether it's about access or not, is whether are we sharing, are we connecting each other to each other, and are we moving forward in that particular conversation? Thank you very much.